Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard and this is Lap of the World in 2023. Now if you've been following the channel recently, you'll know that oil system integrity has become an unfortunate theme around here, but I figured I would just make the best of things and ride that wave of interest. And so today I wanted to use this video to throw some gasoline on the ever-burning fire that is the NSX oil filter debate. <laughs> now before you click off of the video saying I don't have an NSX, the methods and data points that we're going to be using to compare all of these oil filters that we have today is going to be something that's going to be broadly applicable to almost any application, so you can stick around for that should you be so inclined to do your own comparison. But what we really want to answer in detail today is uh, when we're next doing an oil change on a first generation NSX, where should we be shopping for a filter? Are you better off just going and getting the currently available Honda part number filter, or are you just as well off saving a few bucks and finding the cheapest thing that you can get at your local chain store? Or should you just book those tickets to Mexico and sell a kidney or two to go find one of these on the NSX black market? These are the original OG NSX spec tall filter, but without any further ado, let's jump into our comparison and see what we find. First things first, let's look at the range of filters we were able to procure for this test. I scoured the internet and called in a few favors to get this lineup of mostly still obtainable oil filters. In egalitarian alphabetical order, we have filters from Bosch, Denso, EcoGuard, Fram, Honda by Mali, Honda by Toyo Roki, Man, Pentius, Purolator, Ultra 8, and Wix. We'll be comparing these based on their form factor, physical dimensions, construction materials, filtration media, advertised filtration efficiency, country of origin, and current availability. The first thing I did was measure each filter and categorize them by form factor. Like a girl on tender, I just picked a number and arbitrarily called anything above that tall and anything below that short. In our case, we're using 100 millimeters as the cutoff to be considered a tall filter, which in our case is just over half of the filters tested. So why, in this case, does length matter? All of the filters we compared are within a millimeter of each other in diameter so as to fit the filter pedestal on our application, so any gains in internal volume and theoretically the filtration surface area would need to come in the form of extra length. Also, having consulted some engineers, assuming everything else is equal, including filtration surface area, a larger filter volume should result in fractionally less pressure drop across the filter. Let's start by looking at the baseline for this comparison, the current Honda part number for an NSX oil filter 15400-PL2-306. It's worth noting that this is in fact the current 2023 part number, although many catalogs will still show a number ending in 505 that has been superseded. Manufactured by Mali in Thailand, the Honda short filter measures 80 millimeters in length or height matching its 80 millimeter diameter for a calculated volume of about 402 milliliters. A product's weight can also say something about its construction, so we've also weighed each filter, and the Honda short filter tips the scales at 321.7 grams dry. Now moving alphabetically, the Bosch 72200 was made in the USA and is currently out of production, but stock is still available for purchase. I found mine on eBay. The first of our tall filter, the Bosch just squeaks across the line at 101 millimeters in length, equating to a total volume of around 507 milliliters. The Bosch weighs 299.2 grams. The discontinued and generally unavailable Japanese manufactured Denso 150-1013 is the second longest filter we measured at 111.5 millimeters, equating to a total volume of around 560 milliliters. The Denso weighs 386.3 grams. The readily available EcoGuard X4484 is made in China and is the shortest filter we measured at 75 millimeters for a total volume of around 379 milliliters. The EcoGuard weighs 302.9 grams. The Fram PH8212, also of Chinese manufacture, is the second shortest filter at 79 millimeters, equating to an approximate volume of 397 milliliters. The Fram weighs 317.2 grams. The original filter for the NSX manufactured for Honda by Toyo Roki in Japan is part number 15400-PL2-004. 
This has been at least anecdotally considered the gold standard for oil filters in the NSX community. These filters are not available through US dealers anymore and may be discontinued. That said, you can still find them for sale on various parts of the internet as potentially new old stock. It is the longest filter we measured at just over 112 millimeters, giving it a volume of around 565 milliliters. As a caveat to its weight, this Honda Tall filter was used, but even after being drained of all its oil, still weighed in at 644.5 grams, nearly double that of any of the other filters used or new. The MAN ML1036 is made in the USA. It appears to have been recently discontinued, but filters are still available for purchase through a few retailers. The MAN filter has nearly identical dimensions to the Bosch filter we measured at 101 millimeters tall for a 507 milliliter volume. The MAN also weighs within a gram of the Bosch at 298.7 grams, making this the lightest filter we weighed in spite of its tall form factor. The Chinese-built Pentius PLG8212 was discontinued in 2021, but is still available through various retailers. It just clears the bar as a tall filter with 100.5 millimeter length, giving it an approximate volume of 509 milliliters. It's 0.3 millimeters in extra diameter, giving it the couple of extra milliliters volume advantage over these slightly longer Bosch and MAN filters. The Pentius weighs 384.5 grams. The Purolator L24484 is made in South Korea and is readily available at most major US parts chains. It falls squarely into the short filter category with a very similar dimension to the current Honda part at 80 millimeters in length, with an estimated volume of about 404 milliliters. The Purolator weighs 329.1 grams. The Ultra 8 361-2905 is most likely made in China from information I've found on the internet, but it isn't labeled at all with the country of origin on either the box or according to Google Lens's translation of the kanji on the filter itself. It appears to still be readily available online and through Napa Auto Parts stores in the US. It is among the taller filters we measured at 109 millimeters in length equating to an estimated volume of around 552 milliliters. The Ultra 8 weighs 349.8 grams. The last filter on our list, the Wix 51378, is readily available at most US parts chains. Made in South Korea at 82 millimeters, it is the tallest of the short filters we measured, giving it in a volume of around 415 milliliters. The Wix was used and after being drained of oil, weighed 358.6 grams. This is in line with the similarly South Korean purolator accounting for some residual oil weight in the filter media. As expected, the graphs show a pretty direct relationship between length and total volume, with the EcoGuard being both the shortest and having the least volume, with the Toyo Roki Honda filter on the other end of the spectrum. Interestingly, the weight of a given filter doesn't appear necessarily dictated by its length, with the Bosch and MAN filters weighing in as the lightest, in spite of being tall filters by form factor. I suspect there will be more to this story once we get inside the cans. Before we cut things open, I also had a look at the shape of the filter gasket on each filter. These were either a rounded P gasket or a square shouldered flat gasket. I attempted to find any hard science to distinguish between the two from a performance standpoint, but all the information I could find on the internet was very anecdotal. If there are any engineers out there who would like to chime in with a preference, please do so in the comments and we can all learn. As we break out the filter cutter, it's worth noting that no usable, hard-to-find filters were harmed in the making of this video. The Denso was a takeoff from Liz's most recent oil change, and the Honda Tall filter was generously mailed in by a viewer after a recent oil change of theirs as well. Starting again with our baseline Honda short filter, as we lift the lid we're met with a relief spring, a filter cartridge comprised of two end caps, one containing the bypass valve, a silicone, in this case, anti-drain back valve, and the threaded and gasketed base plate. Starting with the can, we measure the wall thickness at about 0.5 of a millimeter. The steel capped filter cartridge measured 54.4 millimeters from end to end and 76 millimeters in diameter. In order to calculate the filtration area, I cut the media out flush with the end cap and then stretched it flat to measure it for length and width. We did lose a millimeter or two under the end cap, but we're looking for relative numbers here, and we cut all the filters in the same way. The Honda short filter yielded about 988 square centimeters, or 153 square freedom units of filtration area by packing some fairly deep pleats around the short cartridge. The filtration media itself was fairly difficult to cut, implying something more than base cellulose. I found references on Molly's web portal to a resin-infused cellulose as well as a synthetic fleece. I'm not really sure which this is. For comparison, though, I did find on the NSX Prime forum where one Billy Johnson had measured the superseded Honda 505 part number filter 
at 129.5 square inches or about 836 centimeters squared. So the newer 306 part actually seems like an upgrade, at least from the old short filter. On to the rest of our lineup, we again start with the Bosch, where we start to uncover why it and its man cousin are the lightweights of the group. At 0.35 millimeters thick, the Bosch has among the thinnest walled cans in the group. The filter cartridge is 75.2 millimeters in length and has a 74.2 millimeter diameter. The actual filter media, though, only has a 66 millimeter diameter with fairly shallow pleats. This led to an 836 square centimeter or 129.5 square inch surface area. This filtration media was very easy to cut, suggesting it's a straight cellulose composition. The Bosch had a synthetic rubber drain back valve. Up next, the Denso shell measured in at a seemingly standard half millimeter thick. Underneath, we found an 87 millimeter long and 73 millimeter diameter filter cartridge containing a relatively massive 1,297 square centimeter or 201 square inches of what Denso labels dual layer filtration media. The Denso uses a silicone anti drain back valve. The EcoGuard's half millimeter thick can conceals a 44.4 millimeter long and 74.7 millimeter diameter filter cartridge wound with 87.3 square inches or 563 square centimeters of probably straight cellulose filter media. The EcoGuard uses a rubber drain back valve. The internet's favorite oil filter punching bag, the Fram's orange can also measures half millimeter thick and contains a 51.3 millimeter long and 71 millimeter diameter filter cartridge. I bet everyone here is surprised to not see their infamous engineered fiber cardboard end caps, but these are in fact steel. Walking around that dead horse of a topic though, when dissected further, we measure the Fram's filter media at 92 square inches or about 592 square centimeters in area. According to Fram, its filter media is a resin infused hybrid cellulose, microglass, and polyester fiber. This Fram filter uses what appears to be a rubber drain back valve. Moving on, cutting the 0.9 millimeter thick can on the Honda Tall Filter by Toyo Roki took a little extra effort, but probably speaks to its significantly greater than average weight. Under the shell, we find an 86 millimeter long and 74 millimeter diameter filter cartridge wound with a test leading at 234 square inches or over 1,500 square centimeters of filter area. I wasn't able to find any detail on what the filter media is, but there's a lot of it. The Honda Tall Filter uses a silicone anti-drain back valve. Next up, the Man Filter. This filter was definitely made by the same people who made the Bosch with a very similarly thin walled can at 0.35 millimeters. The same synthetic rubber anti-drain back valve and also a very similarly constructed filter cartridge. That said, when unraveled, the Man contained a bit more filter media at 137.5 square inches or 887 square centimeters. The shortest of our so-called tall filters, the Pentius's blue half millimeter thick outer layer contains a 69 by 75 millimeter filter cartridge wound with only 106.9 square inches or 690 square centimeters of filter element, giving it the least filtration area of the tall filters, exceeded as well by several short filters. This was primarily due to a low pleat density in spite of having more length to work with. The Pentius had the shortest length of unraveled cellulose looking filter paper in the group. This filter uses a rubber anti drain back valve and in our case it was a bit misshapen. The Purolator has a typical 0.5 millimeter wall thickness and with the white can removed we find a 50.8 by 70.5 millimeter filter cartridge housing around 109.5 square inches or 706.5 square centimeters of what Purolator calls multi-fiber high density media. The Purolator uses a silicone anti drain back valve. The last of our tall filters, the Ultra 8's can measures a half millimeter thick and contains a filter cartridge 79 millimeters long and 71 millimeters in diameter, along with a silicone anti-drain back valve. At 174.6 square inches or 1,126 square centimeters, the Ultra 8 boasts the third largest filtration surface area in the test. I was not able to find any detail on the type of filter media for the Ultra 8. Our last filter, the Wix, has a half millimeter thick body that covers a filter cartridge that measures 54.5 millimeters in length and 70.7 millimeters in diameter. The Wix filter contains 95 square inches or about 613 square centimeters of glass enhanced cellulose filtration media along with a silicone anti drain back valve. In summary, when it comes to filtration area, the OG Toyo Roki Honda Tall filter lives up to its reputation and weight. That said, the Denso, Ultra 8, and the Mali Honda filters all turned in decent numbers as well. 
Although I don't have the equipment to verify this myself, I did also chart the advertised filtration efficiency of each filter for which I was able to obtain data. The ISO 4548 test provided the most common ground, and you can see the claimed efficiencies here. Note the difference in particle size measured for some versus others. The last thing I measured inside each filter were the bypass valves. These valves allow unfiltered oil to pass through in situations where the filter may be clogged or there is otherwise some condition that inhibits oil flowing freely through the filter media. You want this valve to open when it needs to in order to ensure the engine still gets all the lubrication it needs, but you don't want it opening too readily and allow unfiltered oil laden with suspended particulate to regularly flow through bearing journals, etc. I measured the effort required to unseat the bypass valve, then measure the area of the valve in order to math my way to an approximate opening pressure in PSI. In theory, the path of least resistance on any new filter should always be through the filter media, and the pressure needed to open the bypass valve would be in excess of that nominal flow. The only real outliers here were the proportionally stiff springs on the Purelator and Wix, and the particularly light spring on the Ultra 8. From doing my initial shopping through taking my own measurements and then finally researching some other data, this has been a real roller coaster of a research project. I think if I kind of follow my inclinations throughout the uh, throughout my process, I think initially on shopping I was kind of jazzed about the Bosch because it was a you know, tall form factor filter, so large internal volume. It's built in the USA and had the highest advertised uh, filtration efficiency. However, having now taken it apart and seeing some of the comparatively flimsy material choices there, I'm not so sure anymore, as well as the, uh, you know, comparatively for a tall filter, very small surface area of the filtration media in that one. Similarly, I had been stoked to see the uh, Ultra 8, which I'd been running in the black car for years, come in as essentially the highest currently available filtration media area, but then it has an extra flimsy uh, bypass valve for some reason. And I did, that was a used filter, but I also had a few other used filters still laying around that I then took apart and tested just to repeat the experiment because it was so much of an outlier, but those are the similarly lightweight uh, springs. So, you know, that raises a bunch of questions of its own, I think. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't think anybody was surprised though to see the, uh, the OG Toyo Roki Honda Tall Filter kind of lead the quantitative measurement categories. Just you pick one up and you just know how it's gonna end. You know the end of the story right away. Um, but as far as what to buy right now, it's kind of a mystery, right? Like the, the new 306 Honda by Mali filter, not too bad, but it's a small can. You know, I'll be really curious, really what I'm curious here is to let you guys have at it in the comments and tell me what you think. Where is your opinion on this uh, lie? Did I miss any uh, potential high quality contenders as well? I would not be opposed to doing a follow-up on this if there are some that come out of the woodwork or enough of them come out of the woodwork to warrant uh, a follow-up. But please let me know what your opinions are down in the comments. If you want to discuss it live <laughs> and maybe hear a little bit more behind the scenes, you can join us tomorrow, well, at least tomorrow from when this video gets published on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash laugh the world. You can hang out with Liz and I in the garage live. We're gonna have a specific session uh, tomorrow though for oil filter Q&A and kind of maybe talking back through how I, you know, why I did some of the measurements I did and why. Uh, so you come hang out with us there. But in the meantime, very curious to see what people have to say about this. Again, this is kind of an oil, it, I'm treating this as a comparison, not a test. Um, so I've, you know, I don't really have any, uh, there are no qualitative measures that I, or qualitative tests I was able to do to see how they're actually, uh, you know, validate the filtration efficiency or anything like that. So again, take this kind of with a grain of salt. We're comparing, uh, again, more quantitative measurements of all these filters. And then that information is out there to do with what you want. Uh, so <laughs> that's where we're going to leave it today, though. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope it was informative, if not entertaining. Maybe it uh, either helps you make your decision on your next oil filter, or uh, at least gives you some ammo to go and for a more air it up uh, <laughs> somewhere. Or do your own tests if you don't have an NSX and uh, do something similar for a different platform to maybe inform other people. Anyway, whatever the case may be, however you use the information, <laughs> go for it. But uh, in the meantime, though, I thank you for watching again. Thanks for all your all support. Uh, we crossed at some point in time 5,000 subscribers. We didn't make too much of a big deal out of it because we've been a bit distracted, if you know what I mean. But we do thank you all for watching and joining us on here. If you want to, again, hang out live, go find us on Twitch tomorrow. 
But for now, thanks again. I'm Richard. This is Laugh the World. We'll see you in the next video, if not at the track.